Hey everyone, Wesley here with another episode of Seeds of Life entitled Man on a Mission. And this time we're going to look at the life of Jesus Christ. In the last video we were looking at already the prophecies that were already before Jesus' life and showing how Jesus existed prior to his becoming man. And we see that beautifully in this text in Philippians where it says, At Christ Jesus, though he was in the form of God, he did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but made himself nothing, taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men, and being found in human form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. So what this passage is talking about is basically what we talked about last time. Jesus Christ was God. God wanted to intervene into <clears throat> the world of men. He wanted to end sin. And like he promised that through mankind there would come this savior person. But now he's like, and, and he's saying like, I am going to be that savior person. I'm going to be that man that does this. And Jesus Christ then comes and steps in. So we see when Jesus comes to this earth, he is, like the title says of this episode, a man on a mission. And we see this even uh, when Jesus was very young, when he was 12 year old. It's this beautiful story how he, he's 12 year old, his parents move to, Je they, they, they go to Jerusalem for a feast because it was uh, usual to go there. And then they lose Jesus. Like on the way back, they're like, oh, where's Jesus? I thought he was hanging out with friends, panicking, looking for him. They lost him for a couple of days, finally go back to Jerusalem and they find him in the temple. And then they're all angry and upset like, Jesus, uh, like, well, why are you here? And then Jesus is kind of surprised as a kid, 12-year-old kid, saying, like, don't you know that I must be in my father's house? And his parents didn't really understand. But he clearly did, from a very young age. Uh, he knew uh, that his father, his heavenly father, had called him for something. And when Jesus grow up, grows up, he finally, well, at a, at a Sabbath, he stands up in a synagogue and he reads from a scroll and he finally, um, you could say, announces his assignment. It's in Luke 4, uh, verse 18. He's reading from Isaiah and he says, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. He rolled up the scroll and gave it back to the attendant and sat down. The eyes of all in the synagogue were fixed on him. And he began to say to them, Today this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. And so we have Jesus at the beginning of his ministry making this bold proclamation of, there's this text, like we talked about, this prophecy, again, from Isaiah. And Jesus is saying, here is the fulfillment of this prophecy. I am coming to bring Liberty. I'm coming to bring freedom to captives, to heal uh, people, to restore. So you can say Jesus no, knew very uh, early on when he was a kid, of course, because he existed before, because he was God. He came here, like Philippians said, said he came here on this mission. He humbled himself by becoming a man. And here he comes with his life to bring freedom to mankind, to free them from sin. And we can see this uh, returning in the ministry of Jesus time and time again. We see that Jesus knew what he was going to do. He knew he was going to die for the sins of the world. And this is very interesting about his life having this very specific purpose. There's this very specific end that everything is leading up to in his life. And that is his death. And we see that Jesus prophesied up to three times that it says, yeah, I will be handed over uh, to the authorities. I will, I will suffer. He will, I, will, I will suffer contempt. I will suffer uh, persecution. I will suffer um, like torture and will be killed. But on the third day, he will raise up. And we see Jesus saying this up to three times and still his disciples don't really get it. They see they see that indeed he's on a mission. They think he is this guy promised. He's going to save us, Israel. But they didn't understand how God was going to save 
Israel and was going to save mankind. They were still thinking in physical terms. They were thinking in terms of uh, the Roman Empire, which was uh, the dominant power of that day. They were thinking, he's going to free us from the Romans. But there was a way deeper uh, chain that Jesus was going to free them from. And that was the chain of their sin. Sin and death was going to be broken. <clears throat> so it's very interesting to see Jesus speak uh, about this, well, kind of bizarre thing of knowing he's going to die. We see it again in John uh, 10, verse uh, 17 and 18. It says, For this reason the Father loves me, because I lay down my life that I may take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have authority to lay it down, and I have authority to take it up again. This charge I have received from my Father. So, here again, it becomes very specific, like, what the goal of what Jesus is going to do. He says, this is why the Father loves me, because I lay down my life. You know, like, like Philippians says, he was in the form of God, but he humbled himself. He became obedient to the Father. He's like, this is what needs to happen. I will do it. He humbles himself. And the interesting thing, how he says here, I have authority to lay my life down and I have authority to take it up again. We talked about this in an earlier video. This clearly shows the divinity of Jesus Christ, that he says that he is going to offer up his life and take it back again. He's saying in advance, I'm going to go there, I'm going to die, and then I'm going to rise up again. And he is taking on, you could say, the main obstacle in the life um, of human beings, and that is death. A death has always had this finality. Uh, when someone dies, it's like, well, we don't know. No, this is it. And Jesus, through his death, he is coming to make an end to death. And we see this beautifully when, when, when Lazarus, a good friend of him, has died. And then when his, uh, the sister of Lazarus comes to him and he's like, Lord, if you would have been there, you would not have died. And then Jesus says, do you think he can rise again? And she says, well, yeah, sure, at the end of time, then God will judge everybody, and then he will rise again. And then and on the resurrection, he will. And Jesus then cuts her off and says, I am the resurrection and the life. And Jesus came to die so that he may bring life. So he may, through his death, put an end to death. And you have this beautiful passage in the Old Testament talking about Death, where is your sting? Which was a prophetic statement about this, again, this future event that that's Christ, that God would come and would, you could say, take vengeance on death, take vengeance on sin. And that's what he did. That's what he did with his life. That's He offered up his life. So, we see that Jesus' death was not an accident. It wasn't like, Oh, there was this guy and he was so nice and he was doing all these cool things and healing people and stuff. But the system got to him like they do with everybody. No, Jesus deliberately walked, uh, well, walked to that altar. You could say he walked to that place where he knew he was going to die. And like we talked about in the last video, we ended with that how John the Baptist says, Behold, the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. And here we see God becoming man, knowing exactly what he needs to do. He's coming to bring freedom, and he knows I'm going to have to die to do it. And like a lamb, like a lamb of God, he walks, you could say, towards his death, is silent, gives no defense when he's falsely accused, and dies the death that we should have died. Dies the death as the penalty. Um, for sin. But doesn't end there. And the third day, like he said, the third day, he rose again to show that death has finally been defeated. And that is also kind of the summary of the basis of the gospel of the good news of Jesus Christ that we talked about in the, and we had a series on that. But Paul beautifully summarizes that in just a couple of sentences in 1 Corinthians 15. He says, I deliver to you as of first importance what I also received, that Christ died for our sins according, in accordance with the scriptures, that he was buried, 
that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. So, we see, if we look at what we talked about last video, way, 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 way back, eh? even in Genesis, even right after the fall of man, there would be someone to crush the head of the snake, but that will be wounded in the process. We see it continue. So, last video, throughout the history of mankind, we see these prophecies. In, in the history of Israel, we see these prophecies that somebody is going to come to make it right. And then we see also that God says that I will come and make it right. And here we have Jesus Christ. And from the beginning, from even young in his life, he knew exactly what he needed to do to make it right. He was going to have to die. And then we see that he did die. And like he said, he also rose again. Again, proving he was that God man that did what needed to be done. Well, pretty cool, right? <laughs> That's, uh, I think it's pretty awesome. So, man on a mission. In the next couple of videos, we're going to look at what he exactly did during that mission. So we're going to look at the promise of life that comes uh, back again and again in his preaching. We're going to look at the inauguration of a new kingdom that Jesus said there was a new kingdom coming. We're going to look at the significance of the cross, like why did Jesus have to die on a cross, and look at the significance of that. And we're going to look, of course, again, at the most important event, the resurrection. So, hope you enjoyed this one. Take a good read at uh, what we shared today, and I'll see you in the next video.